Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday live stream. So today, a lot of things to go over. So let's just jump right in. So, of course, Sunday's just one of those odd, odd days usually for the crypto market. But we can see that in all honesty, the last seven days, which is what the uh, thumbnail really was representing, the seven day increase or gains have been pretty lively. And we can see that Bitcoin's almost at uh, was at nine percent. Of course, going down, going down a little bit for the last twenty four hours. Uh, Ethereum at 4.4%. We're going to talk about that today, about this Ethereum ETF, which uh, one very large entity thinks it has a, a reasonable chance to get past. I'm not so much in that favor. Solana up almost 16%. And uh, the big winner for the last seven days is Chainlink. And we talked about this a couple of days ago. Uh, Chainlink itself has been partnering up with some pretty big names like the JP Morgans, the BNY Mellons for real world assets and transfer across the globe. And I've always said uh, it's, it's a funny thing uh, for crypto digital assets, actually investing uh, for everything that's out there. You never really know exactly what's going on in the background. Projects sound fantastic and they sound they can make all these different promises. And you're like, that's great. And then, of course, either they do or they don't implement the things they're trying to do or they're failing behind the scenes or they're doing things that you know just were mentioned in passing just a little bit as opposed to something else and of course as time goes on you look at it, you're like hmm chain link oracle even a layer one solution real world assets that sounds pretty decent i can see i can get behind that and that's why it's up 24 percent now that doesn't mean like uh you don't have other things going up like near protocol and there's of course meme coins across the board because that's just how the nature of the market is. Wow, Phantom 18%, Bonk 14%. I'm all excited about that because those are in my portfolio. Anyhow, that's what we have for the market, but let's get to it. So this next week upcoming, actually it's really, it really comes down to vetoing or approving. And there's three things that are going on. The first one is HJ Resolution 109. This was actually passed, or excuse me, this is actually shot down in the Senate because it was already approved. And what it was really all about was it was all about large institutions and banks being able to put our custodying crypto assets or digital assets and having them off balance or on balance. And what that means is if it's off balance, that means that it's not on their their p &L. It's It's not actually taken over. It's not on their on their documents, it's not on their accounts, which means that if it's off balance, that's safe. The problem is, is that the, the rule before, everything was supposed to be on balance. And that kind of screws up everything, especially if you've taken a look at, oh, you know, those little companies like uh, FTX, Celsius, Voyager, BlockFi, they, they had everything on balance. And uh, with that, that was a problem. So it went through the House of Representatives. If you're not from the United States, uh, you know, we have to go through the through Congress, which essentially the House of Representatives and also Senate. House of Representatives went through there. The Senate, it was supposed to get killed and it actually uh, passed 60 to 38. We have two senators per state. And then from there, this is what we have. This is supposed to be, looks like it's going to get shot down or vetoed by the President of the United States because he's already put this on, out on May 8th. He said, look, if you guys if you guys vote on this and ask to come to my desk, I'm going to shoot it down. So good luck. And they they did. They, they're going to point it. They're going to put it out there. So how much time does he have? Well, the Senate vote was May 16th. I'm not 100% sure that the, the clock starts because they have 10 days from May 16th, excluding every Sunday. So that would put that on May 28th, maybe May 27th, depending on if they uh, include May 16th, the day that they actually uh, passed that bill or shut it down. So that's 10 days and we'll see what happens. Now there's a, a couple of different things that could happen. Of course, we talked about this before a couple of days ago, which the president could just uh, do nothing and then uh, because the Senate is out and the House are uh, out of session, it's a pocket veto, which means they just kind of just gets rolled off and that's it. Another thing that could happen, actually, is Gary Gensler could come out from the SEC and say, hey, we're going to retract this. And the president doesn't have to actually sign this into veto. So, of course, he can have more uh, clout for political structure as we come in the presidential election. So this will be a big one. So, yeah, it is May 28th. So I guess it's not next week. It's like uh, Monday or Tuesday after that. So. Watch for that to happen. And again, I think this could be a very big political move. Some people th say it's not. I think it is. And we'll see. So there's that piece. And then, of course, another piece that just came out, FIT21. FIT21 is the Financial Innovation and Technology Act. Uh, bill is expected to be voted on next week. So it has to go through again, the House, under the Senate, and hopefully it doesn't get vetoed. 
And this is uh, what this would do, which I thought was pretty interesting, is that it'll establish the CFTC, not the SEC, the CFTC, Commodities Future Trading Commission, as the leading regulator of digital assets. This would be great for us because let's be honest, the SEC does not have us in mind. It kind of seems like that. So if this goes through, of course, let's see how it works out. That means that the CFTC will be over instead of the SEC. This will be the first major crypto regulation bill to be approved. Crypto ownership believes the bill is necessary to keep the U.S. competitive globally. I have to wholeheartedly agree. And the bill would be the CFTC's authority over digital assets and set clear, I should say, consumer protections, which let's be honest, Gary's doing a pretty horrible job. So with that one, that is the second one, and we'll see if that actually gets, gets through. But imagine, imagine if this gets vetoed, I mean, before the 10 days, and then this doesn't make it out of the house. That just gives you the a clear indicator of where digital assets and crypto are going in the United States, right in the toilet. And then lastly, uh, May 23rd, May 24th, somewhere around there, we are supposed to have the final decision of the Ethereum ETF. There's no, they can't open it up for commentary. They can't push it down the road. It has to be either approved or denied. I believe it's May 24th. And a lot of people are saying that it's not going to happen except for Coinbase. Coinbase says the, the market is under, underestimating the timing and the odds of the spot Ethereum ETF approval. And they have it as high as 40%. I don't, I've been wrong before on the spot Bitcoin ETF, so we'll see how it goes. But imagine if all three of these things happen in this week, which it very much could happen, uh, danger. And we'll see how the market reacts. I will just tell you, probably not favorably, but in the long run, it'll be pretty good. That's why I dollar cost average for days, which I think are going to come up pretty soon. And we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I see some negative price action coming, but who knows? And then also just, I mean, getting away from the politics and, and talking about bills and things like that. I know that people, when we, when we talk about crypto, usually we talk about a lot of the days we talk about, hey, the number goes up, everybody's happy, right? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. So people will say, ah, oh, you know, my project is failing a little bit and it sucks because the price goes down. Not really. Look at Chainlink, right? Chainlink was, you know, going the wrong way. Over the last 90 days, you are actually bleeding against Bitcoin. But over the last seven days, went up almost 24%. And why? It's because of the things we talked about. But there has to be a little bit of knowledge behind why we're actually getting into these assets. And Bitcoin being the number one that I think has, quite honestly, uh, the best use case. I know people will, will dispute me on that, and that's fine. But I think over time, nobody has beaten Bitcoin. There is no flipping that's going to happen anytime soon. It is a great I think it's a great store of value and a four-year hedge against inflation. And it could be a, a medium of exchange, depending on which layer twos come out. But there was this great snippet, great video. And it was it's only a minute long. I want you to listen to this because we kind of lose sight about just how much things are actually needed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you listen to this. Let me see, make sure you can hear this correctly. Ba, 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 ba. There we go. Yeah, about a minute or so. Take a listen to this. Just some random guy interviewing somebody. It looks like Home Depot. Take a listen. How much did you pay for your first house? $18,000 with 17 acres. What year? Uh, 89. 1989. When I was a kid, cars were thousands of dollars. A brand new car, like, I don't know, $5,000. I remember seeing ads. Houses, houses were probably what 10, 20,000 when I was a kid. A dollar used to actually be worth something. But what happened? You know what happened in 1913? Federal Reserve. Tell Look me. at a dollar bill. Federal Reserve note. Okay? okay. Who's Federal Reserve? This is their money. Right? Who are they? Are they feds? Are they part of the government? Are they a private organization? Are they run by banksters out of Europe? Look we'll back in 1913. See what happened. I'm gonna look into it. We got that. We got it. We got to save. The money. Look up Federal Reserve. It's on your dollar. It's on your dollar bill. What does it mean? Who is it? Who started it? Are they? Are they us? Are they the U.S. government, or are they something else? <laughs> see, see that right there. That's what we should be talking to people about. I don't think we should really. If if you can understand about the Federal Reserve and inflation, then you can totally understand Bitcoin. 
and get behind it. Because when you just say, when you start talking about Bitcoin, it's a little bit difficult. So that kid right there, the kid who was interviewing the, the guy, I guarantee that was you at some point when someone was telling you about the Federal Reserve. You're like, what? Really? That's how it works? And inflation? No way. Government's lying to me? That's insane. So yeah, the Federal Reserve, like I said, the Federal Reserve is about as federal as Federal Express. Nothing to do with anything. And of course, uh, there's many literatures, many books that are written on it, uh, but you can just, you can do your own research on this one. But essentially, the Federal, is the, the Federal Reserve is there to issue debt. That's really what it comes down to. And when I was talking about this, I said, yeah, you know, if you want to talk to somebody about that, it makes sense to start there. And then they'll start to understand about inflation and then show them this. There's a great website. It's called uh, PricedInBitcoin21.com. Let me blow this up. Let me make sure everybody can see this the right way. Yeah. So what this is, is taking a look over. It's actually taking a look from 2011, to 2024. We talked about this many times. But if you can show somebody this, they can kind of get it a little bit more. And it's all about inflation. Before you really understood about inflation, didn't you just assume that prices just went up because that's just how it goes? That's just how it goes, right? I mean, things appreciate. I don't really know why it appreciates. Of course, is there's there's more value on this, and you know, that's just how it has to be. I mean, irregardless of the fact that you know the government just prints money and sticks it into uh, the M2 money supply, essentially, and just starts printing like crazy, and then just floods the market with uh, useless dollar bills. It probably has nothing to do with it. It's probably just the fact that the de that houses just get more expensive, food just gets more expensive. The fraction reserve lending. I don't want to start with that, but you can see right here. As far as this was the United States median new house, not the average, the median, right in the middle, right, depending. But of course, we have a very large selection. And yeah, some people say, well, the average house is 418,000, whatever it is. Fine, whatever. I'm just, it, the only thing that you have to understand about this, this chart is very simple. I know most of you have seen this many times. It's just where, how Bitcoin fights inflation. So again, you have the new house price on November 1st, 2011 is 214300 Can you imagine that? 2011, that's, that's how much it costs roughly to get a new house. Pretty good. 214000 And it would have cost you 64354 Bitcoin back then. Because Bitcoin wasn't worth that much. But as time has gone on and there was just, there was a crossroads, essentially, right here around 2017, 2018. Actually, 2017. And that's when I think that's when I got into crypto, Bitcoin, everything else. I think it was a lot, a lot of people got into it. And at that point, it was just the reversal. The house of a new pri the price of a new house kept going up. And if you evaluate that in Bitcoin, it kept going down. So again, it used to cost you sixty four thousand for a new house. Now it cost you six. A new house was two hundred fourteen thousand. Now it's four hundred thirty four thousand. Isn't that crazy? That's insane. And it's only going to get. As time goes on, the only thing that the dollar bill can do is lose its value. That's the only thing I can see. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just seems like we're going to keep having higher numbers. We have, I want to say, $34 trillion in debt. And the only real way to get out of that is to really print money. And once they start printing money, and I think there's going to be a massive amount of money printing happening. Who knows? It could be relatively soon. When you flood that much money into the market, what does that mean for asset prices that people own? usually goes up. So you can take a look at that. I linked the, uh, the website price in Bitcoin 21.com, uh, in the uh, description. So you can check it out. Also, I just want to show you real quick, the UK average house, it's the same thing. You, and it doesn't really matter where you, where you come from. If you just, and, and you know what, let's just do this because if you look at it as all, it's kind of skewed pretty heavily to Bitcoin, right? But let's just try this. Let's do the last five years. And I want to put that in Bitcoin, not Satoshi. I want to overlay that with fiat. It's the same thing. Actually, you know, everybody says, or people have been saying lately that if you want it as a hedge against inflation, it's a four-year hedge, essentially. If you can hold it for four years, it's going to be pretty good. Let's just do this. Because here you can see that it used to cost you 27 Bitcoin for a house in the UK, which cost you 231000 Now that same house cost you 283000 and it cost... Really? It cost you four Bitcoin. Wow. Again, 27 to four. Let's go to 2020. I wonder how that would work, if that even does work. 2020, May 19th. 
<laughs> doesn't matter. So again, the same thing, ah, a little bit, a little bit less 25 Bitcoin. Now it costs you four. It used to cost 238,000. Now it's going to cost you 283,000. So it just goes up. Actually, I got to tell you, if you're in the UK, you're doing pretty good as far as like the average house uh, prices. So congratulations for you. But it doesn't always work like that. I, I will say if you go to the website and take a look at everything, you can put in the US dollar, all the fiats, the precious metals, commodities, orange juice. For some reason, orange juice crushes it. And fiat, no idea why. And cocoa. Ah. But then like you'll see stuff like this, like palladium. And it doesn't really work out as well as you think it would. So like, let's say Satoshi's, put that off, Fiat. Let's go for five years. And see, look at that. It's roughly about the same. But I'd say the vast majority, except for Palladium and orange juice, for some reason, holds up pretty well on the dollar. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then to finish up, we get into the, the Q&A. There was this piece, this post from John Luis, and he had sent this uh, from Vivek. And I don't know what's going on, but we know that uh, China, Russia, India, Saudi Arabia, UAB, they're trying, they're coming together for, for the BRICS coalition, which essentially is to get off the dollar. I found this interesting that Vivek talks about, this is the Chinese gold trading activity. This is for their uh, futures, futures trading volume over in Shenzhen, I think I said that right. And you're gonna see that the volume of gold is at, I mean, way higher than I think it's ever been. I can't go past 2015, but what's happening there? Well, it's a pretty good idea if they wanna get off the dollar standard, they go on to gold. Worked pretty well for us in America until 71. Actually, even worse than that. But then if you take a look at it, Bitcoin's also being searched for, not to say that that China's going to buy Bitcoin, that's it. But it just was interesting. And then this one really got me. Let me blow this up. This was the money printing uh, for China. And I was, uh, I was like, okay, well, I don't know how much 300 trillion yuan is. I have no idea. I don't transact in that. So I had, I took, so look at this. Since 1999, we're well, actually 2000, they went from 13 trillion yuan, that's a lot, to 300 trillion yuan. And if you extrapolate that, and I had to look it up uh, for the exact amount, it was, so it was 300 trillion, 100 billion, 200 million, 700,000 and no cents yuan. Chinese yuan renminbi to the U.S. dollar. That is, so for U.S. dollar, that's 41 trillion, 545 billion, 721 million, 168,000, 27 dollars and 15 cents. And I thought to myself, I'm like, I thought we were the kings of money printing. Apparently not. If you take a look at the M2 money supply, I mean, from the 60s, you know, okay, it was a lot. But going from 2000 around here, let's see if I blew this up. The M2 money supply was 4.6 trillion from, well, let me go back right here, 4.7 trillion. And then we print the money like crazy, 4.7 trillion up to 21 trillion, 21.7. That's like 16 trillion, which I got to tell you, China's crushing us. So I don't know what's going to happen globally, but it's a good thing that we have that hedge against inflation, which of course would be. Bitcoin and digital assets, but that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And lastly, I put out a poll and I don't know if I'm gonna actually do this, but it seems like like I have an assistant, shout out to Big E, Nardo, who puts together all the different articles and different things that are going on. And we you know, kind of mold that in, in, into the show and it takes a little bit of time, but not too bad. But for every one article that I actually pick to talk about, there's three that are in the lurch there's so many things going on. So I was thinking about, you know, maybe it's time to, as things accelerate, to do two streams, one in the morning and then one later in the afternoon. I don't really have, like, essentially, I don't, I have a pretty stress-free life, I must admit to you guys. Um, so I put that in X, and so far, 
33, 22, like 50% are saying sure. The other is four, and then no, there's too much info at 40%. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And we'll actually talk about that in the Q&A because who knows I could do it. It's not like it's a big thing. It's just that there's so much info going on out there. And maybe even something like doing something where it's like Bitcoin only, and then maybe talking about altcoins. And then, of course, the risky stuff we don't talk about, the really risky meme coin stuff. We do that over on Dan DGen. But let me just think. Anyhow, that's it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.